What's going on guys? Sam Adams here and welcome to On The Topic Of, which is a series I do on the channel every single Friday where I go through a, a piece of video game news that's been in the spotlight in the past week or so and I give my thoughts and opinions on it as well as keep you guys informed somewhere along the way. And this week we're going to be talking about dynamic resolution scaling, which is a huge part of what makes Halo 5 run very smoothly and it's probably one of the best games we've seen on the Xbox One so far. And I wanted to kind of delve into that and tell you guys exactly what's going on with this dynamic resolution scaling and try and create a better understanding of the technology that's going into these games that we're all enjoying. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. So what is dynamic resolution scaling? I like to think of it uh, in a Netflix kind of mindset. So let's say you go over to a friend's house and they have a 1920 by 1080 amazing television that looks absolutely amazing and you're able to watch your favorite shows in the highest resolution possible at a very quick frame rate and in general in a very good experience. You're able to also watch those shows on a smaller television that's about 1280 by 720, you know, pretty much your standard $100 Walmart TV, but the show itself doesn't change and just because it's on a smaller screen doesn't mean that it runs any less smoothly it's just a different way to see the game Another way to look at it from a YouTube content creator's perspective is the idea of thumbnails on YouTube. Uh, for instance, whenever I go in to make a thumbnail, I have the option of setting it to some kind of 16 by 9 ratio, whether it be 1920 by 1080, 1280 by 720, uh, 640 by 480. Any of these are applicable and able to be used with a YouTube thumbnail. Now, if I have a huge image, then I'll just go ahead and do a 1920 by 1080, pop that thing out and upload it. Or if I have a smaller image, I can actually upload it in the uh, 640 by 480 format, but YouTube, whenever they receive these thumbnail files, they actually make them that really small picture that you see beside my videos, so at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter, and the person is still seeing whatever you uploaded, regardless of the resolution that it was uploaded at. So Halo 5 uses this kind of technology to make sure that the game maintains its you know, really smooth, silky 60 frames per second all the way through. So pretty much the problem at hand of why this game can't run at 1920 by 1080 constantly is that the graphics processing unit inside of the Xbox One just simply can't handle it and it's not powerful enough. So companies have to kind of develop a workaround whenever they're creating these big AAA titles to make sure that they run smoothly when compared to their PC counterparts. So whenever there's a ton of action going on on the screen with tons of explosions, guns firing, and a lot of different kind of a AI on the screen at once, the resolution of the game itself will downscale because it needs that power to maintain that 60 frames per second. The lowest frame or the lowest resolution you're going to get on Halo 5 is actually 1152 by 810, and that's pretty much whenever there is constant, you know, chaos and stuff going on on the screen, tons of explosions, like I said, scorpion tanks everywhere. This is definitely something that you will see in the multiplayer. But whenever it's just, you know, you as Master Chief or Spartan Lock and you're just kind of wandering through the terrain alone, then the resolution is able to upscale up to 1536 by 1080. I had them written down there just so I wouldn't forget. Uh, but this is a pretty high resolution when compared to the full 1920 by 1080 that we've come to expect for the next generation. And ultimately, this dynamic resolution scaling isn't even able to be seen by the naked eye. You can't even tell that it's going on just because that 60 frames per second maintains the perception of a constant resolution anyway. Now, The Witcher 3 used this kind of technology earlier this year on the Xbox One, which is why it was pretty controversial, because it was actually clocking in at 900p on the Xbox One. Now, I will say that you can't really tell whenever you're playing The Witcher 3 on the Xbox that it's down to 900p, but at the same time, it was very jittery. Like, you would definitely be able to tell whenever it went from 900 to 1080p, and that was just kind of something that took the gamer out of the experience that they were having with Geralt of Rivia. Now, with Halo 5, it's kind of done in a different way, more of a slider format. Instead of transitioning from one level of resolution up to another or down to a lower one, you're able to kind of slide along. Like it'll just transition from 1152 by 810 slowly up to, you know, around 1920 by 1080, and you won't even be able to tell the difference because it's transitioning like a wave rather than like stair, uh, stepping up a flight of stairs, so to speak. You're not really able to tell because that kind of sudden change isn't even there. What it comes down to is that dynamic resolution scaling really 
really allows the game to run at its fullest potential because in first person shooters like Halo 5 Guardians, it's very important to have that 60 frames per second consistency throughout because any jittery frames in multiplayer can definitely cost you some lives. Any kind of jittery frame rate in the campaign can definitely take you out of the experience and make your brain focus on the uh, less superior hardware of the Xbox One. And just the fact that we can sacrifice a few pixels here and there to maintain that kind of illusion that we're kind of enthralled in the game is a sacrifice that I say is definitely worth making and it's definitely shown that in Halo 5 Guardians it can make the game a real winner regardless of what resolution it's running at. It's just a good game and one that is definitely benefiting from this kind of technology. So there you guys have it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, drop me a like down below and comment what you think about this kind of thing. Do you think this technology is state of the art and something that we should have been doing for a long time? Or do you really think that 1920 by 1080 is what every developer should shoot for and should settle for nothing less? Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. And if you are new to the channel or you've never seen any of my other videos, be sure to head over and check out some of that other content because I do upload new stuff like three or four days a week depending on the week. So there's always something new on the channel when you drop by to watch some videos and as always I want to thank each and every one of you guys for watching this particular video I'll talk to you soon peace